إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد عباد الله اعلموا اعلموا أن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار عباد الله our MC, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate him to the highest level of Jannah. Mention a certain title, but I would like to turn the table and flip that and look at it from a different angle. And I want to speak about, rather I would ask a question and that is the title of the talk. And the title of the talk is, Who am I? Who am I? The theme of the conference is I am a Muslim. But who are you? Every one of us, if I ask you who are you, you automatically will say I am a Muslim. But what if someone else asked you, who are you? You should not only say, I'm a Muslim. Because as soon as you, as soon as you say, I'm a Muslim, to them you are a terrorist. To them you are an ignorant person. To them you abuse women. To them you are nothing but destruction for humanity. But you should tell them if they ask you, who are you? You should tell them, I am mercy for all mankind. Forgive me. I am mercy for the creation. Because you are a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about your messenger, about the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to be mercy for all mankind. And you and I, we wear his shoes sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We live his life. We show the rest of the world what Islam is all about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the world that Muhammad was sent to be mercy for all of you. Not for humanity, not for the jinn and the ins, but for every living being. Things that we know and things that we do not know. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not only mercy 
to humanity. Remember, للعالمين Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mercy for animals. He was a rahmah for the animals. You know, Western society, they come out and they, they, they play that. Oh, they know everything. They have rights for children. They have rights for women. They have rights for animals. They have rights for environment. They don't know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already already before these people even speak before they learn how to read and write before they know what human rights means before anything else muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave everyone each one of the living beings their rights yaqulu abdullah ibn ja'far radiyallahu anhu he said i was writing behind the messenger of allah it's a little boy. He's writing with the messenger of Allah. And then the messenger of Allah, he said, Abdullah said, then he told me a secret that I will never share with anyone else. And then the messenger of Allah stopped the mound that we were writing. And then he got off and he said, I am, let me, let allow me to respond to the call of nature. قَالَ فَدَخَلَ بُسْتَانَ حَدِيقًا he enter a bushy area. And then when the messenger of Allah entered that area to, re to, to relieve himself, a camel from a distance run to the messenger of Allah, not to charge him, not to hurt the messenger of Allah. And he said, Abdullah ibn Jafar said, the camel was making noises. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned towards the camel. And the camel lowered its head to the messenger of Allah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And the camel started tearing. Tears were coming from the eyes of that camel. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held the head of the camel. And he wiped the tears of that camel. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صاحب هذا الجمل؟ he said who is the owner of this camel? who is the owner? one of the Ansar a young man came to him he said يا رسول الله the camel is mine فقال إن هذا الجمل he said indeed this camel came complaining about you complaining about the young man and the camel stated that you overloaded and you did not provide anything for that camel. Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ When these people tell you, who are you? You tell them, I am a mercy for all mankind, for all the creation. All of them. One of the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said, we were traveling with the messenger of Allah. And then a bird came flying, rushing towards the messenger of Allah, flying over his head. And the messenger of Allah stopped the whole army. And he turned to the Sahaba. And he said, who scared this bird concerning its baby? Just a bird, Ya Rasulullah. And a Rasul. It's nothing. In other words, as a matter of fact, our children, for fun, they hunt birds. For fun, they kill them. But the Messenger of Allah said to the Sahaba, Who did this to this bird? Who took these babies? One of the Sahaba said, I did, Ya Messenger of Allah. He said, Bring it back to. Give it them back to their mother. You have no right. If they ask you, who are you? You tell them, I am Rahman al Not only that, Ibad Allah subhanahu wa Look at the Rahmah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the beginning, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand 
on the trunk of a nakhla for the day of Jum'ah for khutbah. And a lady from the Ansar, she said, why don't you build a member for your messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Sahaba, they got together and they built a member for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the messenger of Allah came from his house and he went straight to the member and that jidda, that trunk of the tree he started screaming and crying like the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, anhu said, we heard the cry of that trunk, we heard a cry like a baby. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came down from the member and he hugged the trunk, the trunk of the tree. Because he was a mercy for all mankind. And you, when they ask you, who are you? What are you? You tell them, I am a mercy for all mankind. For all the creation that Allah ever created. If they tell you, you are ignorant, you tell them, no. I am the source of knowledge. I am the source, the light for all of you. There is no other scripture before the Quran that we know of. That the beginning of the scripture was Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord other than the Quran. Not the Torah, not the Injil, not the Zabur, not the, none of the things that we know of started with Iqra. Read in the name of your Lord. So you, you are not ignorant. You not backward person. You not a destruction to this ummah or to this nation. No. You're the guiding light. You are the guiding light. As a matter of fact, Allah praised the people of knowledge and he said, Allah raises those who believed amongst you and those who have ilm, knowledge. Not only that, that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the, the, the scholars are the inheritance of the prophets and the messengers of Allah. When the Western society, they will always tell you, they will tell you the dark age. They taught us in schools, dark age. And they say this period was the period of dark age. They will never tell you and they will never share with you when, where the time that they call dark age, we were enjoying science. We were doing surgery on people, surgery on eyes. You know, people, our doctors used to come and see the patient, cut them open, and sew them together. Surgery. Till today, they still use our tools, but they will never give you the credit. So who are you? You are light for mankind. You are the imam, the leader of all mankind. Remember, the first man to fly, who was he, Ibadullah? Who was he? You don't, you see, sometimes, sometimes it hurts me because you as Muslims, you don't even know your history. Because they taught you, you were under the dark age. You didn't know anything. You, you guys did not, you know, did anything. You didn't add anything to this world. You're nothing but a consumer. You're nothing but a consumer. But the truth of the matter is everything that we know today of science, the foundation of that was Muslims. Even those cameras, I always say this and I talk about this. Even the camera, Adasa, you think, oh, no, 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 Saeed, you know, the cameras, they, these are new things. You know, they, this is, this is a, a new, no, 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 no. The person who laid the foundation of the camera was a Muslim scholar. As I said, the first man to fly was a Muslim scholar. The first person who came with the engineering system of, mo of, of a mobile or, 
all automobiles was a Muslim. But we don't know them. You don't know their names. Because nobody wants you to know them. Because you got to be under so I can stand on you tall and strong. You are a light for mankind. You are the voice of those who are oppressed. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never allow oppression to take place. You are the voice for the children who has been oppressed in Palestine. If you were a true Muslim, you and I would have been the voices for those children. I was looking one of some of the videos that the soldiers will release this, you know, wild, crazy fish dogs on children, and the dogs will rip these Palestinian children apart. But you're supposed to be their voices. You're supposed to be. Because you are Muslim. See, the theme says, I am a Muslim. So what does it mean for Sheikh Asim al-Hakim to talk to you about little thing here and there? And then he said, well, I know that. For Sheikh Yusha, Yusha Evans come to and talk to you about, and he said, I know. This. No, Muslim is all about action. That's why Allah said, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Not only iman, no amal. You are guiding light for everyone. You are the one that's supposed to be helping our sisters and brothers in everywhere who are under oppression. Wallahi ya ibadullah. It hurts. It hurts. When you see Muslims how we are nowadays, you know, not knowing what they've been, not knowing their legacy, not knowing the Muslim, the early generation, they had respect only for one thing, and that was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You always heard this story. Rabi ibn Amir at Tamimi radiyallahu an. In the battle of Qadisiyah, we were leaders. We became leaders not because we were large in number or we were fine people or we looked certain number or certain certain way or we had a certain color of skin. No, we were leaders because we feared Allah. Rabi Rustum, the leader of the Persian army. He said to Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas in the battle of Qadisiyah, send me someone. Send me someone. I want to speak to these people. I mean, this Arab who used to be ignorant, who used to slaughter their daughters, used to bury their daughters alive, who used to slaughter their sons, all of a sudden, now they're challenging the Persian Empire. This is not logical. I want to meet these people. So Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, he sends Rabi bin Am. I want you to reflect on this. Now Rustum, according to the Mu'arrikhin, according to the historian Rustum, he said, I am going to receive a delegation from Sa'ad bin Abi Sa'ad bin Waqas, bin Abi Waqas, and I want to look my best. I want to look, you know, perfect. So what did he do? He beautified everything. Silver, gold, diamonds, pearls, just to impress the Sahabi who's coming to see him. The ulama, they said, he put on the ground and the curtains of the tent, he covered them with silk. And he sat on a throne that is made out of gold to impress the Sahabi. But Rabbi radiyallahu anhu, with the patch, thobes, symbol, man, you know, with the very lean, skin horse riding his horse all dusty. He did not even change his clothes because he's going to meet some one of the most powerful leaders of their time. But he came as he was because they were not people of show. It wasn't about show off. They were people of court. So Rabin came 
And the, at the gate they said, you got to drop your weapon, get off your horse, and walk with humility to the leader. He said, no. I don't humiliate myself for anyone. And I'm not leaving my weapons. If you like, I'll go in. If you don't, I'll go back. You call me. I didn't call you. And that's why they were the best of the best. So the man said, what, why are you here? Why are you here? And he said, Allah has sent us to lead all mankind from the worship of others to the worship of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only one God. My dear brothers and sisters, you have heard for the past two days scholars talking and talking and talking. And you don't need to hear Brother Saeed, but I will tell you this. As Sheikh Al-Qahtani last night concluded his talk, the purpose of the conference is not for you and I just to meet here once a year, get together, meet one another, which is a beautiful thing. But if the purpose of the conference is to change you, to, mo to motivate you, to make you a better person, then your attendance is not beneficial to you or to anyone. I want you to be a Muslim. And when they tell you you are a terrorist, they say, no, I am a Muslim. I am the reason that people like you survive today. The people like you prosper today. And yet, Ibad Allah, no ummah is better than the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be proud of that. Hold on to your deen and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you in both worlds. Wa jazakumullah khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.